On the 16th of June 1940, the Soviet Union had invaded Estonia. The military occupation was complete by June the 21st 1940 and rendered official by a communist coup d'état supported by Soviet troops and the Nazi government under the 21st August 1939 agreement signed in Moscow between Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union as a treaty of non-aggression. A secret protocol of the pact defined the mains of influence with the Soviet Union gaining eastern Poland, Finland, Latvia, Estonia and the Romanian province of Bessarabia. Germany was to control Western Poland and Lithuania. After Germany invaded the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June 1941, the Germans were perceived by most Estonians as liberators from the USSR and its repression, and hopes were raised for the restoration of the country's independence. The initial enthusiasm that accompanied the liberation from the Soviet Union quickly waned as Estonia became part of the German-occupied Reichskommissariat Ostland by January 1944, the front was pushed back by the Red Army almost all the way to the former Estonian border. On January 31, 1944, general conscription mobilization was announced in Estonia by the German authorities. On the 7th of February, Yuri Ulyots, the last constitutional prime minister of the Republic of Estonia, supported the mobilization call during a radio address in the hope of restoring the Estonian army and the country's independence. 38,000 men were conscripted and the formation of the 20th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS 1st Estonian had begun. After the Soviet King Josep Gudov offensive, the division was ordered to be replaced on the Neville Front and transported to the Narva Front to defend Estonia. The arrival of the 1st Battalion, 1st Estonian Regiment at Tartu coincided with the prepared landing operation by the left flank of the Leningrad Front to the west coast of Lake Pipus, 120 km south of Narva. The 1st Battalion, 1st Estonian Regiment was replaced at the Yershovo Bridgehead on the east coast of Lake Pipus. Estonian and German units cleared the west coast of Pipesi of Soviets by the 16th of February. Soviet casualties were in the thousands. On the 8th of February 1944, the division was attached to Gruppenführer Steiner's 3rd SS Panzer Corps. Then defending the Narva bridgehead, the division was to replace the remnants of the 9th and 10th Luftwaffe field divisions, which were struggling to hold the line against the Soviet bridgehead north of the town of Narva. Upon arriving on the front on the 20th of February, the division was ordered to eliminate the Soviet bridgehead. In nine days of heavy fighting, the division pushed the Soviets back across the river and restored the line. The division remained stationed at the Sierversti and Ufra sectors being engaged in heavy combat. In May, they were pulled out of the front line and reformed with the recently returned Narva battalion into the division as the reconnaissance battalion. By that time, active conscription of the Estonian men into the German armed forces was well underway. By spring 1944, approximately 32,000 men were drafted into German armed forces, with the 20th Waffengrenadier Division consisting of some 15,000 men. When Steiner ordered a withdrawal from the Tannenberg Line on the 25th of July, the division was deployed on the Lastekudemaki Hill, the first line of defense for the new position. Over the next month, the division was engaged in heavy defensive battle in the Sinimad Hills. The heaviest Soviet attack took place on July the 29th. By noon, the Red Army had almost seized control of the Tannenberg Line. Last reserve on the front, the 1st Battalion, 1st Estonian Regiment, had been spared from the previous counterattacks. The scarcity of able-bodied men forced Turmanfuro Paula Maitla to request reinforcements from patients in the field hospital. 20 injured men responded, joining the remnants of other units including a part of the Kriegsmarine, supported by a single remaining Panther tank. The counterattack started from the Paris Cemetery, south of Tornimagi, with the left flank of the assault clearing the hill of Soviet soldiers. The attack continued towards the submit under heavy Soviet artillery and bomber attack, culminating in close combat on the Soviet positions. The Estonian troops moved into the trenches, running out of ammunition, they used Soviet grenades and automatic weapons taken from the fallen. According to some veterans, it appeared that low-flying Soviet bombers were attempting to hit every individual Estonian soldier moving between craters, some of them getting buried on the soil from the explosions of the Soviet shells. The Soviets were forced to retreat from the hill. The battle took many casualties in the division, including Sturmbannführer Georg Soden, who was killed on the 28th of July, and Hauptsturmführer Osak Ruud on the 3rd of August. 
When Hitler authorized the full withdrawal from Estonia in mid-September, all men who wished to stay to defend their homes were released from service. Many chose this offer fighting the Soviets alongside other Estonian units and then withdrawing into the forest to become the Forest Brothers partisans. Severely weakened by this, the division was withdrawn to Neuhammer to be refitted. Eventually, the reformed division, which numbered roughly 11,000 Estonians and 2,500 Germans, returned to the front line in late February, just in time for the Soviet Vistula Order Offensive. This offensive forced the German forces back behind the Oder and Neisse River. The division was pushed back to the Neisse, taking heavy casualties. The division was trapped with the 11th Armee Corps in Oberglau, Falkenberg, Nibelin in the Silesia area. On the 17th of March 1945, the division launched a major escape attempt, which despite making headway failed. On the 19th of March, the division tried again, this time succeeding, but leaving all heavy weapons and equipment behind in the pocket. In April, the remnants of the division were moved south in the area of Goldberg after the Prague Offensive. The division attempted to break out to the west in order to surrender to the western allies. The local Czech population resumed their hostilities on the surrendered Estonian troops, regardless of their intentions, in what veterans of the Estonian division who had laid their weapons down in May 1945 recalls as the Czech hell. The local people chased, tortured and humiliated the SS men and murdered more than 500 Estonian POWs. Some of the Estonians who had reached the western allies were handed back to the Soviets. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you did and I hope to see you in the next video.